in a history this long, there's been numerous paper, manuals, film strips, movies, everything made to help train the troops. I've really concentrated on what I'm going to show you on stuff that you may be able to find at a gun show in your neighborhood or in your locality. Now, originally... Click the change lever off safe. And we'll start the firing cycle with the cartridge igniting. As that happens, gases travel along the barrel and into the gas cylinder. Now let's use the animated drawing and follow the course of the expanding gases through those label parts. When the gas reaches the well, it hits the gas piston plug and drives the piston to the rear. At the same time, the bullet leaves the muzzle. Now that you've seen the training film, I'm going to show you some of the training aids that we've got. Now these were originally made for an overhead projector. Now you, a lot of you may not know what an overhead projector is, but they were slides that would fit on a light source and then they could transmit it to a screen in the front of the room. Now as you can see, this is the trigger assembly. It has a trigger, has a safety, all the sear parts. Now because of its okay. age and it was made safety, out of... Safety, one position forward, so it's on full auto. Now, you can see here the sear notch corresponds to the sear recess in the slide. And that's what holds the slide to the rear. So. I have the gun is cocked, and you can see that the sear is holding the slide. When I pull the trigger, the sear goes down completely out of the notch. The slide can go through its full cycle, going forward, firing, returning. And since the sear is still down, it will continue to do that until either I release it and the sear comes up or it runs out of ammo. Let me show you now, again what we're talking about. Sometimes you can see the rivets on the inside and sometimes you can see them on the outside, but there are times when you can't see it and it looks like the rails are actually part of the original receiver. Now on this side, you really can't see any evidence of the rivets. I'm gonna rotate it over onto the other side. On this side, you can actually see the heads of the rivets. Now the reason it's important for you to know that these are separate parts. If somehow they fracture or break, they can be repaired, but don't take them out to see what's underneath them. Don't want to do that. Now we're going to take the bolt out. Now I have to rotate it so I'm you I'm going to show you how to change the extractor without taking anything else apart. Now normally I'd be on that side where I can see, so I'm going to have to look over the top. What you do, bring the bolt partially back. I'm going to reach in, lift up the extractor. You can see it come up. I'm going to move it forward just a little bit. I'm going to take my screwdriver and pop it out. Whoop! And there's the extractor. In service, you do it with a live round and a fired case, but we can't use a live round here. Now to reinstall it, I'm simply going to put the shank back in, the spring, and I'm going to go back far enough so it's up over the edge, let it go forward, and there it is, reinstalled. 